Hey Graham, it's yours truly. <laughs> well, it's been a lot of, lot of years since I first met you, and it's still sort of a surprise that you've been on the air with this show for 10 years. O.J. Simpson was my first interview that got a lot of exposure and the first opportunity I had to really engage on a personal level with somebody of significant stature. 17-year-old Graham Bensinger has just landed an interview that would make a veteran interviewer a little jealous. The teen hosts a sports radio show in St. Louis, managed to get O.J. Simpson to sit down for a lengthy talk over the weekend, and he joins us this morning. Graham, good to see you. Nice thing you How'd did. How'd you do it? I called him and called him. Well, it definitely wasn't easy. And emailed him and called him again. and. Fast forward a year and a half later, after I'd been calling and emailing him for twice a week that entire time. One day the phone rang at the house, and this guy, this guy goes, hey, is Graham there? And I'm like, no, he's not. Uh, uh oh, this is OJ. Yeah, pretty much knew who, who it was. I get a call one day saying, OJ's coming to St. Louis to do a private autograph signing. I had my mom write me a note excusing me, left school, drove to this hotel room, and interviewed him for my radio show. Graham was sick a lot, missed a lot of school, but the crazy thing about it is every time he missed a day of school, an interview happened to pop up on his website. So it's kind of funny how that worked out. What's a general misconception that you find people have with you today? Misconception? Well, I mean, obviously, we go to the trial and I didn't commit a crime. Right. I was accused from that. Uh... I just have memories of, like, sitting in English class and everyone else is just, like, trying to prepare for the next quiz or test. And Graham, like, leans over and goes, hey, guess what? I just interviewed O.J. Simpson this past weekend. I'm like, my God, this guy's on a different level. <laughs> Going into my freshman year of college, I'm like, I wonder if OJ would sit down with me again. And he ended up being agreeable to do that. Regardless how accomplished OJ the football player was, it's not plausible for many people in their mind to separate that from OJ Simpson the murderer. No, Does, no, there's no OJ Simpson the murderer. Right, no, I'm saying in no, their mind. <laughs> that, 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 that person doesn't exist. Right, no, I'm saying but in, in their, their minds. They're misguided. And what do you do when you see a crazy person on the street? You just walk right by him and you know him. So that's how I treat people who feel that way. Mm -hmm. I just walk right on by, hey, have a good day, and I ignore him. You know, he has fascinating stories. He's golfed with every president back to Nixon. He's nice as can be, but obviously he has some issues in, in his past. People continually come up to him, extend a hand, ask how he's doing, ask how the kids are. Rarely does he ever get a negative remark. Really? I interview him, I get a dozen death threats, tons of hate mail. I remember one person emailed me wishing me a slow and painful death from cancer. And it's like, you know, it's like he's accused of murdering two people. I interview him and everyone's coming after me. <laughs> Welcome to show business. Yeah. Congratulations, and I hope the next 10 years are as, uh, as rewarding as these past 10 years have been for you. You take care. Congratulations. Look forward to seeing you when you get to Vegas. Take care, buddy.